separate from the divinity of us. We have to work hard and achieve things and attain things in order to feel that we're worthy of anything good. Whereas when we're connected to the divinity of us, we approach life from a sense of fullness and deep appreciation because we feel connected to our own light. It's as if our own light is shining on everything, giving us a clearer new perspective. I've gotten stuck on workbook exercise 22 from A Course in Miracles with the word vengeance. Why is what I see a form of vengeance? Okay, I'm gonna read this lesson so that people know what this question is about. Here's lesson 22. What I see is a form of vengeance. Today's idea accurately describes the way anyone who holds attack thoughts in his mind must see the world. Having projected his anger onto the world, he sees vengeance about to strike at him. His own attack is thus perceived as self-defense. This becomes an increasingly vicious cycle until he is willing to change how he sees. Otherwise, thoughts of attack and counterattack will preoccupy him and people his entire world. What peace of mind is possible to him then? It is from this savage fantasy that you want to escape. Is it not joyous news to hear that it is not real? Is it not a happy discovery to find that you can escape? You made what you would destroy, everything that you hate and would attack and kill. All that you fear does not exist. Look at the world about you at least five times today for at least a minute each time as your eyes move slowly from one object to another, from one body to another, say to yourself, I see only the perishable. I see nothing that will last. What I see is not real. What I see is a form of vengeance. At the end of each practice period, ask yourself, is this the world I really want to see? The answer is surely obvious. So back to that question once again. I've gotten stuck on workbook exercise 22 with the word vengeance. Why is what I see a form of vengeance? Okay. The person who asked this question, I believe, is a little further along on the path, um, having done a lot of introspective work. And so seeing their world, they might not see what they believe is a form of vengeance. But what A Course in Miracles means is at this stage, lesson 22, you're really just a newbie onto this whole thing. And you're coming into a place where you're about to be undone. Your perception is about to be undone you are no longer going to see yourself as a doing. You're going to begin to know yourself as a being. And the ego holds tenaciously to that MO of being a doer, achiever and attaining things and having a reputation in the world, caring about the good or bad opinions of other people. And you can tell how exhausting that is by the very fact that most people like drop into bed at night, get up from an alarm in the morning to go perform all day long, and then exhausted at the end of the day, drop into bed and just pass out. That is not the way that we are meant to live. And so that's the kind of world that is a form of vengeance. When we're separate from the divinity of us, we have to work hard and achieve things and attain things in order to feel that we're worthy of anything good. Whereas when we're connected to the divinity of us, we approach life from a sense of fullness and deep appreciation because we feel connected to our own light. It's as if our own light is shining on everything, giving us a clearer new perspective. At this stage, when you're just a newbie onto the path, you're seeing things that are perishable, that won't last. You're trying to covet things in order to feel safe or secure. And it's a very untenable way of living. The only way you know it's untenable is when you start to progress beyond that and you see that there are ways of being connected to the something more 
that in this stage might feel very unsubstantial and not real. You might have no belief in the divine or anything of divinity and think that everything you don't see isn't there, isn't real. Whereas when you progress in these lessons of A Course in Miracles and you begin to hear the voice for the divine within you, guiding you and directing you more capably, letting go of the ego stance of being a doer and start being a being, you start to realize what an assault that was on you to perform so much and to try so hard and to see yourself as separate from everyone else when in fact we're one. We're all in the same boat together because, because we're one. We truly are one love. And yet we're experiencing all these degrees of separation that's anything but love. And so having to even show up to that life on a day-to-day -day basis, believing in its reality as being the only thing there is, is definitely an assault. And it is a form of vengeance. The ego can be very harsh in wanting to be right rather than happy and wanting to be the winner and wanting to be the one who's on top. It can crush everything else in the process, crush your hopes, crush your dreams of being connected to something more. This ego will never win, that's the good news. But at this phase, you're just walking into and onto a path that's going to wake you up to the brilliance of who you truly are, the magnificence and the eternal nature and the unboundedness of who you are. Where right now in lesson 22, if you're just beginning this path, you still see life as separate from you where you really have to strive and try very hard to be good or be acceptable or be any of those things that people strive for, rich or powerful or loved. We don't realize at this stage that we are love and that all we have to do is connect to who we truly are deep within ourselves. And then that's going to color our world in a completely different way. Absolute love, absolute peace, absolute joy, but it upwells from within us when we start to identify with who we truly are and then address the world of separation or of pain of, or fear from this place of connectivity that makes it so much more substantially malleable and capable of being healed and capable of being loved back to wholeness.